Are you ready to boost your ability to bounce back from hard situations? Well, get excited because we'll dive into the world of resilience. Resilience is like having a superpower that helps you stay strong when life gets tough. And trust me, we all need some of that power from time to time. By the end of this unit you should be able to identify the key components of resilience and develop strategies to increase resilience in oneself. You will also learn how to develop a plan to maintain a goal and learn how to set realistic goals and take action to achieve them. We'll show you some excellent exercises to build up your resilience muscles so you can face hardship head on come out on too. So, what exactly is this resilience we keep talking about? Resilience is the ability to adapt and bounce back from challenges, adversity, or difficult situations. It's like having an inner strength that allows you to cope with stress and overcome obstacles without giving up or losing hope. Resilience is made of some important parts that can help you face challenges. Let's find out what parts we mean. Their positive self-concept and self-esteem, optimism and positive outlook, perseverance and persistence, problem-solving skill, adaptability, emotion regulation, and coping skill, and social support and connectedness, anyone can boost their resilience with a little effort and training. Whether learning to be more optimistic, finding ways to cope with stress, or having a more positive outlook on life, we've got you covered. Let's start with the first activity, finding your Ikigai. This activity will boost your resilience. Ready? Ikigai is a Japanese concept that combines the terms Aiki, meaning alive or life, and Gai, meaning benefit or worth. For this activity you'll need a pen and a printout of the worksheet, or you can draw the worksheet yourself. Ready to discover your Aikigai through 9 simple steps? Each step requires some work and time, so feel free to pause the video after each new instruction. Let's start with step 1. Ask yourself, what am I good at? What are my strengths? Write down the answers in the first circle. In step 2 ask yourself, what do I love, what can I create build do? List down your interests. In step 3, find where your skills and interests overlap or connect. That's how you identify your passion. There is no right way to approach this. The key is finding a comfortable fit that resonates with your skills and interests. Remember that you can pause the video anytime you need to complete a step. Let's continue with more steps. Step 4 requires that you find an answer to the question, what does the world need? It can be any small change that you can make. In step 5, look for your mission. Look through your list in step 2 and step 4 to find a connective area allowing you to give back to your local communities. To complete step 6, list down your possible source of income or what you can do to get paid in the future. Vocation refers to a person's calling or purpose in life in the context of their career or profession. To find yours in step 7, refer to step 4 and step 6. Next in step 8, to identify your profession, look at the skills you listed in step 1 and how you can get paid in step 6. Ready to enter the final ninth step? By completing the previous steps, you can now combine your passion, mission, vocation and you'll have a rough idea of what your Aikigai might look like or be. Now, we will be shifting our focus to another aspect of building resilience, goal setting and planning in activity two. The first game goal matrix will help you create structure among your goals and show you where to focus. The second game ladder of actions will help you figure out how to achieve your goals. It's important to work through all steps, so please pause any time to work on these activities. Let's have fun and learn how to prioritize and achieve our goals. For the next games you'll need pens post, it notes and printouts of the goal matrix and ladder of actions. Let's start with goal matrix. First, think about your goals. Write eight of them on post, it's one on each. When you are done, mark the post, it's right side with letters from A to H. Next, rate how far you are in reaching this goal. One means nowhere, five halfway, and 10 means you've achieved the goal. Now let's compare pairs of goals and next steps. Don't forget, you can pause the video anytime. The order in which you should compare your goals is by using letters you wrote on them, like you see on screen. Draw a line on the note of the more important goal. This is how to count the points each goal gets. Make sure that each note has been compared with all others. 
count the lines you drew on each goal, and write the number on the note in Roman numerals. Now, take your goal matrix printout or draw your own. You can pause the video and finish all steps first before continuing. Now, take one of your sticky notes and see what number of progress you marked there with the normal numeral. Find this number on horizontal axis. As you see in the L example, 6 was the progress. Now, find the Roman numeral from the note on the vertical axis. For the example L it was 7. Put the letter of your sticky note where the axes meet. Goal matrix is an activity that helps you realize the importance and progress of your goals and where they connect. Pause the video and take a moment to reflect on your results by looking at the worksheet. Now as core self, how do you feel about your goal matrix? Was it easy or difficult to decide between the goals? Have you discovered something you were not aware of before? Can this help you focus more on important goals for you right now? Take a moment to answer these questions. Now that you have your goals in order, let's figure out how to achieve them. Prepare your ladder of actions printout, or draw your own ladder. Before you start remember, it is important to follow through and achieve the goals that are important to us. But sometimes goals can change for all kinds of reasons. And when they do do not feel bad, but make yourself another ladder of actions plan with your new goal. This is called adaptability. Of course with each goal achieved, we should celebrate our victories. Celebrating our achievements is a big part of adaptability and resilience too. It can help us stay motivated, enjoy our lives and the benefits that come with feeling good about achieving something. So, in the space after when I will finish my goal, I will. Write something that you will do upon achieving your goal. Use it to keep yourself motivated and let it help you guide your journey. First, choose a goal and write it on the top of the ladder. Then start from the bottom and write an action you can take to get closer to the goal. You can draw a picture next to each step to show how you'll feel after completing it. Feel free to stop the video to complete these steps. Later on when you'll start working on your goal, you can mark down each step you've taken and completed. It's a great way to keep track of your progress and see yourself moving closer and closer to your goal. We already mentioned that sometimes plans can change. When they do do not feel bad, but make yourself another ladder of actions with your new goal. This is called adaptability. It's all about adjusting to changes and new situations being flexible, handling unexpected challenges, and finding new ways to solve problems. If you're adaptable, you can handle these situations more easily, and with less stress, which means you are becoming more resilient. Time for a reflection. Ask yourself, what did I learn about myself? How can I integrate new knowledge into my daily life? In what other areas of my life could I use goal setting? Which resources were most helpful or least helpful to me? How do I plan to use the skills and insights I've gained? Are there any changes in my attitude or approach toward difficult situations after completing this unit? If you can answer these, you have a good grasp of concepts from Unit 1. Keep up the good work. Unit 1 was about how resilience can help you bounce back from challenging situations, because it combines persistence, toughness, flexibility and adaptability. Having resilience can lead to improved social life, better performance under pressure, and protection from depression and anxiety. One step of building resilience is to find your sense of purpose, for example through the Aikigai activity. It's also important to know your goals and how to achieve them, which can help you develop more sense of purpose and motivation. It makes you more prepared to find the solutions for problems because you divide your goal into small, adjustable and easier to navigate steps. Congratulations on completing Unit 1 of Module 4, which was focused on developing your superpower, your resilience. See you in the next unit where we will teach you how to bounce back from tough situations.